Tom Campbell here. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you and enjoy the video. Good afternoon, Tom. We're back to Tom Campbell Answers Your Questions. And today, Thanks for being here. Today we have a, a question on Tom's Park from Keith F. Since Tom's Park seems to have equipment for helping to improve physical health back in PMR, such as in healing diseases and, and exercises like that and such, is it possible or likely that doing exercise in Tom's Park, walking, swimming, tennis, et cetera, is also set up so that it actually improves physical health in PMR? I realize that things like muscle memory would likely be affected since experience is experience, regardless of which virtual reality it's gained in. He's taking your quote literally. But I wonder if Tom's Park has been configured by the LCS to transfer the regular health benefits of exercise back to PMR. I'd love to have the benefits of hiking in the hills, for instance, during times when I'm not able to do that in PMR. What would you say, Tom? Okay, but as you as you say, Keith, the uh, using your mind, you know, to exercise is a valid thing to do and is helpful as far as your uh, so called muscle memory, you know, muscles really don't have memory, but that's, that's what we call a pattern in your consciousness of certain, you know, certain motions. But in any case, yes, a Tom Spark exercise will improve your general health, but only slightly so. It's still an, a physical avatar. And that physical avatar, you know, gets stronger or weaker, grows or shrinks according to the rule set. How that avatar works and, and how it changes is a very large connection to the rule set. And it has a lesser connection to the content of the consciousness. But consciousness leads, the body follows, so there is some impact on health to be doing healthy things while, you know, out of body or in your mind or in your uh, imagination. Um, so though there's some gain to it, Keith, uh, you can't give up your exercise in, in the physical world by doing that exercise in the non-physical world. That just won't work. You're going to have to uh, do it, your exercise in the physical world, if you want the the full benefit of that exercise. So sorry, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. Help, yes, but it's not a it's not a replacement for you know exercise in in the physical. All right. Well, that's that was interesting. Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith. Sorry, I couldn't be better for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is are also on Tom's Park, and this one comes from Theodore. I'm reading through Tom's Park once again, just for good measure, and I'm about to start practicing it, but I do have a couple of questions and thoughts that popped up during my read. I realize that some of this information is possibly something that should be left up to my imagination. I think that's one of your first instructions. <laughs> or, or is just my inquiring ego wants to know. So feel free to answer just the questions you like if you have the time. Mm -hmm. But I thought I should at least ask in case some information could be given uh, that would be helpful to me or to others. So the first question is being in Tom's Park is supposedly an out-of-body experience. How real does that feel? Because my typical out-of-body experiences feel as real as waking reality. But Tom's Park is also described as a daydream and switching back and forth between my imagination data stream and the LCS. So I'm just wondering how real life the park feels compared to normal out-of-body experiences. I'm guessing it should feel as real as any other out-of-body experience with no awareness of the physical when you're there. But I feel like the information is a bit contradictory at times. Okay. Uh, I don't find that information contradictory, and I'm not sure why you do. But a daydream can be just as real as being here. And out-of-body can be just as real as being here. Um, Tom's Park is not entirely and out of body, it starts with an imagination. In the beginning, you create 
what you see and hear and smell and taste. You create it intentionally. But as time goes on and as you practice, that imagination begins to take on a life of its own. Things happen that aren't part of what your will is creating, right? It's not part of your imagination. Things happen. Characters show up. Stuff just happens in there that's not yours. It's just going on. Well, that means that you're getting some data from the data stream. Now, the two are not mutually exclusive. You can have some imagination and some data coming from the LCS and the data stream, both together at the same time. So you're doing part of it and the system's doing part of it. So it can be 100% your imagination. It can be 100% out of body from the you know, data stream from the LCS, or it can be some mixture of those two. And the idea is for people who have trouble getting into an out-of-body state, having trouble getting their intellect uh, to sit down and be quiet while they develop their intuitive side, this is a way to sneak past that barrier kind of painlessly without all the frustration of, of trying and failing and trying and failing. And that is you start with your imagination. Now you should have that imagination to the point that it's just as real as your physical reality. The things you see and smell and taste, all your sense data should be as real as the physical world is real. And as you work through that imagination, just stick with it. Don't analyze it. Don't say, oh, well, how real is my imagination? Is it just as real as the physical? Let me see. You know, all of that analysis is your intellect, and that just gets in the way. So from your question, I would guess that you probably are overthinking and you're probably going to have trouble with your intellect because this all comes, this, these questions are all coming out of your intellect, and it's a matter of being aware of and controlling the situation. All of that is counterproductive. You don't have to be aware of whether or not, oh, I just saw a rock there. Did I intend to put that rock there? Or am I getting a data stream that put that rock there? Hmm, I have to consider that. You see, that's your intellect butting in. You just need to experience it. If you see a big rock in your path, then experience the rock. Don't analyze the rock. Don't question it. Don't think, oh, where did this come from? You know, is this me or is this the data stream? That will prohibit you from success. Just have the experience. So you can have experiences that feel just as real, whether they're a daydream and out of body or in our physical world, virtual reality because they all come from the same source. They're all data streamed to your consciousness. Now, data can be fuzzy, data can be high resolution or low resolution. And sometimes when you're out of body, you can get extremely high resolution. And sometimes you get extremely low resolution. Basically out of body, you get the resolution that you need for what it is you're trying to get. So if all you're having is a conversation, Typically, you get pretty low res because high res backgrounds are not, you know, don't help your understanding in a conversation. So you have very low res backgrounds then. You even have low res maybe to the person that you're looking at. It's not unnecessary. There's no sense wasting computer bits giving you something that isn't significant, you see. So for you to judge the value of something by what the resolution is, is just your intellect trying to, you know, trying to be the judge, trying to assess, oh, is this real? Is this not real? Is this, you know, high res? Is this low res? And if so, why? And where does that come from? And your intellect's just sitting over churning and churning, trying to do analysis and judge, and it will keep you from success. So let all that go. Just experience it. Let it be whatever it is without judgment, without question, just experience. Let the experience go wherever it goes. Things happen and you're walking down a path in Tom's Park and a big frog jumps up and begins to speak to you. You know, don't say, that's ridiculous. Frogs can't speak. That's your intellect, judging it as being ridiculous. Talk to the frog. Go with whatever happens. Experience the experience. It doesn't have to be high res. It doesn't have to be meaningful. It doesn't have to be 
you know, gee whiz, or oh, wow. It's just experience. So have it for whatever it is. Don't analyze it. So that, I think, will probably take care of a whole lot of your questions, but we'll, but we'll see. Yeah, there's any number of people that have been struggling with Tom's part for that very reason. They get there, and their intellect is still in front, in control, analyzing and judging every step of the way. Oh, okay, I'm on the beach. Now, I feel something, but is that really sand that I feel, or am I just imagining that I'm feeling that sand, or am I really feeling that sand? Oh, I don't know. I can't tell. Well, that person is going to have trouble ever getting to the point where they're out of body in Tom's part, where they're just getting a data stream because their intellect is still in charge. They need to just have the experience. And the point is that in the beginning, that may be difficult for some left brain people who do logical process and judge and analyze everything automatically because that's what they do. It's gonna be difficult, but you just keep doing it. You just keep going. You just keep going back to that beach or going to that volleyball game or going to wherever it is you're going. You just keep doing it and getting involved. And eventually it'll be so common because you've done it a hundred times that you'll stop analyzing it because it'll be so familiar to you that you'll just let it happen. And then when it happens, it'll take you someplace that you could never have imagined. You see, so that's the point. You have to just keep doing it until you can let go with that intellect. But this is an easier way for letting go with the intellect because you, you start out with an imagination. And if you can imagine something interesting and engaging and engage all your senses, then it leaves little room for your intellect to butt in. So that's the point. So it's just, this is a, a tool for helping people get their intellect to sit down and be quiet while they're experiencing and developing their intuitive side. That is basically it. You know, the out-of-body, all the paranormal things, including out-of-body, only take place on the intuitive side. They don't take place on the intellectual side. So first, you have to get that intuitive side developed where it's a stable space that you can exist in. And the Tom's Park is just a tool to help you do that. Thank you, Tom. That's very interesting. I know you've built a lot of intricate process in it in order for people to let go of their intellect. That's a special um, feature of how you've structured this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that should be very helpful. I'm going to go on to question number two. I can supposedly create my own activities in the park, probably when I'm experienced with it all. Is there any other important information about this that could be helpful other than imagine it when you try to enter the park? Uh, you can't just imagine it whenever you need it. You know, if there's something that uh, you think would be helpful, see these. These structures are basically metaphors. They have meaning. They have, they have significance to people. Okay, so, you know, if you want to make up your own metaphors, that's good because you'll relate to your own metaphors better and more strongly than you'll relate to somebody else's metaphors, including my metaphors. So if you're in the park and what you really need is you know, something that makes you feel this way or that way, or, you know, there's some, well, just use your imagination to make up what you need. You know, we have people making up all sorts of things. One thing that, uh, that Donna suggested was, uh, if you have trouble getting to the park, then catch a bus and you can go outside and a bus will come pick you up and it'll say Tom's Park, you know, on the bus, just get in. And the next thing you know, you'll be at Tom's Park. You see, that's just a tool. It's a metaphor to let you let things happen rather than getting up in a wad of, oh, I don't know how to get to Tom's Park. Let's see, am I there yet? No, I'm not there now. So that's just you talking to your intellect. You have to let go of that intellect and get into your intuitive side. Well, make up metaphors that work for you. 
if the little get in the bus to go is something that because you ride buses a lot and it just feels natural and that gets you there, then do that. You see, start with something that you're very familiar with. Like if you have gone to the beach a hundred times and you really like it and you enjoy beaches and there's just nothing like going to the beach and lying down in the sun and the sand and hearing the surf. And, you know, if you're just a beachy kind of person, then start at the beach because that will be a natural for you. That will be a metaphor that you can relate to very strongly. You see, now, if you've never been to a beach or you don't like beaches and sand always annoys you because it always itches and scratches and you just don't like it. Well, don't go to the beach. You know, don't, don't go there because that will be a metaphor that won't work for you very well. Do something else. So if you don't find the metaphors you need, make them. You know, make them yourself. You can do that. But make them and then use them. Don't make them and say, oh, gee, I just made that up. So now that's mine. And that wasn't a part of Tom's Park. I wonder if that's going to work. You think that'll work too, even though I just made it up? And do I have to keep imagining it every time I see? You know, that's your intellect, judging and assessing. And people get wound up with, with that. That's because they, they want to make sure they're doing it right, and that they stay in control and those kinds of things. You've got to let that go. You say, oh, I want to talk to a such and such. Well, if I didn't have to mention that that such and such is in the park, we just put one there. You know, the same person that rides a bus put a shark in the lake. But you don't have to worry about that. That's his shark, you see, in his lake. And every time he goes there, then that'll be there. But it's a friendly shark that is a vegan shark. So, yeah, go figure. But that, see, it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to make a good metaphor to help you focus your intent on what you're doing, but don't let it get in the way. So no, there's no real, it's not like, well, here's some things you should make. No, that's not the point. The point is to make up the things that suit you, that you need, metaphors that work well for you. You see, now I've created a bunch of metaphors there that I think are pretty general that are work for most people, but everybody is different in the kind of metaphors they resonate with and the metaphors that hit them cold. So that's why I encourage everybody to be a creator in Tom's Park, adjust the park, add things, take things away if there's something there that annoys you. Make it into, into something that suits you very well. But whatever you do to make it, you know, whatever you change there, it has to be friendly. It has to be such that it doesn't hurt, cause trouble, cause pain. You know, uh, it has to be positive. Tom's Park is a positive place, and it has to remain always positive. So don't bring negativity there, because then that will just get in your way. That negativity will be in a way. Say, oh, I'm going to bring you know, I don't know, poisonous flies or biting flies to the beach, because when I go to the beach, there's always a lot of biting flies there, you know, well, that will then just disturb you and distract you. And if they make you feel negative, they'll make it less likely that you'll be able to just relax and go with the storyline. They, they will tend to dig or pull at your intellect. So always create metaphors that are useful to you and are positive for you. Other than that, there is no limit. Go, go at it. Anything that works for you is good for you. That's great advice, thanks. The third question we have, why are all these rules with the automatic return? Why isn't it just instantaneous with intent? If it's because the rule set is rigid, why is it so? Just feels like there's a lot of moving 90 degrees, then wait, then again, when I should just have the intent to be there, and that's enough. Like when I want to return to the park after having been transported on a yellow bench, much quicker return technique there. Mm -hmm. That's because I made this park for all sorts of people. 
who have all sorts of metaphors and all sorts of issues with getting their intellect to sit down and be quiet. So there's a little bit of something for everybody and take things that work and use those. And if they don't work for you or they just don't seem right, then ignore them, do it your own way. Okay, now there are people who if you say, well, just teleport, they'll say, I can't, I don't know how to teleport. They can't do that, it's too simple. They need process, they need metaphor that will help them ease into that situation because that's just the way they are. It's the way their intellect won't allow that to happen. Their intellect just says, nah, that can't happen. So they have a problem and it doesn't work for them. But if they do this, this teleport, but first you have to close your eyes and, and not see the process, then your intellect doesn't have that process to grab hold of. Otherwise, people will go there and they'll say, well, I can't teleport because I'm waiting for the teleportation. I want to see what happens. Do I just suddenly disappear or do I stream there very fast? Uh, you know, do I like move on a beam of light? They want to inspect, their intellect wants to inspect the teleportation process. And that keeps them from ever doing anything. So I set up a process whereby that doesn't happen. And I, make, I tell them to do a pause, close their eyes and give a pause, a, a slow blink. And then when they open their eyes, they'll be there. And now the whole process of it is done while their eyes are shut. There's nothing to see. So the intellect doesn't need to jump in and examine it. So it's just for those people who need that, it's there. And because that was a, a, a safety concern. Well, what if I get on my horse and I go riding and riding and riding out in Tom's Park and I get lost and I can't come back? What's going to happen? That's a fear. Okay. So I have a way you can always come back. And that way is important that it has to work for everybody because it's a fear that anybody could have. Anybody that had any kind of metaphors could have that fear of not getting back. You know, that's Bob Monroe running into the big wall. He can't get over or around. It's the fear of not getting back. It's the fear of the unknown. So that's going to happen to people. And they need to be able to do anything in Tom's Park without any fear whatsoever of there being a problem. So I made that return a very general return so that everybody could do it and not have any problems with it and come back without any trouble and they won't get stuck. I don't know how to teleport, you see. So yes, these are what you might call mind games. But what they are is using metaphor in order to allow people to apply their intention to do something. And it's written specifically for left brain people who have a hard time doing that. So that's why I have it done different ways. With the yellow bench, I don't go through all that process. You can sit down in the yellow bench and it'll either work or it won't. And there'll be a certain set of people that the yellow benches just won't work for them because it's not a good metaphor for them. They'll sit in the yellow bench and nothing will happen because they'll sit there and their intellect will be waiting for something to happen. They'll be expecting something to happen and they don't want to miss it. They want to see it as it happens. And for them, nothing will ever happen there. And that's okay, because I have lots of things for them to do in Tom's Park. And if that particular thing doesn't work for them, then they can move on and do something else. So, or they could sit on the yellow bench, close their eyes, take, you know, for a few seconds and open them back up and they'd be someplace else. And that is a metaphor that may work better for them. So I gave a little bit of everything and people can find the things that work for them and then use them other places if they want to. So it's, that's, there's a lot of things that are in Tom's Park that are, that are varied for different people to, to have different experiences. And then you use what works for you. So you can do a slow blink on a yellow bench if you want to, or you don't have to. It can be instantaneous. Everybody's, everybody's different, you see. So the tools have to be available for everyone. And if you don't find a tool you need, make one up. And that will become part of your time's part. That's great advice. You illustrated that very well, that not everything works for everyone. Find what works for you. 
That's very good. Our fourth question um, on Tom's Park. The whole Blackbeard and Mr. and Mrs. Claus thing. One of Tom's recent videos helped me come to understand Igwith, I think. They're not factual things. The park is designed from imagination, so you can bring what you want to the park. It's not suggestive that these things are factual, physical things or anything like that. And even if that was the case, my experience of the park wouldn't change. My intellect wanting to judge its validity based on such aspects is the work of my ego, which you just you pointed out very well before that. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to add to that? I, I, I think he I think he, he covered it. I think he answered his own question. There. <laughs> he yes, covered it. Those I'll are there. They're <laughs> they're they're meant to be both interesting because if you if you google blackbeard you'll find he was not a fictional character he was a real character and the storyline i wrote fits in exactly with what happened so you know it's fun it just yeah. it, it's just you know it's not exactly humor but it in a way it is you know and it's fun it's just a fun aspect of the park to tie those kinds of things in and I suspect that when you read that thing about this is the conference room where you know Mr. and Mrs. Claus have their have their Christmas party every year, that that will just give you a little chuckle as you as you read. And it's part of yes, the fact that this is an imaginary place. This is a this is a, a place that exists outside of our rule set and our you know virtual reality physical world. So it can have all kinds of fantasyful things that are there that can happen there you know the horses talk the chipmunks talk you know there's lots of things that, that go on there that don't go on here and you can use those you know there will be people who will go to tom's park in and around christmas time just to be part of that party and they'll meet mr and mrs claus and they will have a grand time there will be those. There will be probably thousands of those people, you see, because that's a yearly event. It happens there every year. So people will do that. And that's fun to do that. And they can do that, not just in their imagination, but the larger conscious system will give them a data stream that puts them in that party. And they will meet Mr. and Mrs. Claus, and they will, you know, probably talk to some elves and other things, and they'll have a, they'll have a really good time. So They'll get that as a data stream from the LCS. And with the Blackbeard thing, they may want to talk to Blackbeard or they may want to go visit that story some. You know, want to find the treasure, whatever. That's okay. Storylines don't have to be criticized by your intellect according to our physical reality rule set. We're letting go of the physical reality, intellect, and rule set. We're in Tom's Park now. That rule set doesn't apply. Now go have fun. You see, expand. And just because it's maybe silly, like the Claus's Christmas party, it doesn't mean you can't have a wonderful time at that party and meet all sorts of very interesting people. And it'll all be coming straight from the LCS and... It will be an out of body, just like any other out of body. Out of bodies are not just restricted to floating in space and talking to entities. It's just a data stream. It's a virtual reality. Why not attend the Christmas party with Mr. and Mrs. Claus? It's a virtual reality. The larger conscious system can, can handle that. It can produce that party and it can make it, you know, and if you have a good sense of humor, it'll, it'll probably be a lot of fun. It'll probably be a funny party. But in any case, the system has a good sense of humor. It knows how to throw a party. You can uh, you know, go to a, a party that's constructed by the larger consciousness system. So you see, these aren't just trivial little things. They're, they're still useful things, even though they're there with, with, some, with some humor. And also there's things there that are meant just to help a person get their intent in line and get their intent focused on something you know just like we use light to heal well the light isn't healing even if we think that's our metaphor that the light goes and gets rid of the black stuff you know but the light's just a metaphor the black stuff's just a metaphor but you use those metaphors 
So there's metaf there's metaphors like that, things like that that are in Tom's part, but they're there to help an individual get their intent focused properly and with you know with clarity and with energy. So it's not a it's not something for your intellect to go, you know, pick apart according to the rule set in our virtual reality. This is a different virtual reality, different rule set. Here, the chipmunks are conversational. You know, our reality, they're not. Here, Mr. and Mrs. Claus have a Christmas party every year in that banquet room. And there's some other meetings going on there, and you could probably show up in some of those as well. So the only, you know, your imagination is your limit, and then the larger conscious system's imagination is the limit. And the larger conscious system is one heck of an imagination. It can really turn out some, some really amazing things. So, and uh, they'd be fun to experience. That's really great, Tom. Thank you for that. A question five is the phone booth at the Lost and Found Information Center. You'll be talking to an LCS representative. What is that exactly? It is exactly a representative of the LCS. It is an, an entity that is, well, if you know, that, yeah, that represents LCS, but think of it this way. It's think of the LCS as a set of interfaces. And this will be an interface to the LCS, this representative, just like your guide is an interface to the LCS. This representative is going to be your interface directly, a direct interface to the LCS. So that's what it is. It's not a, it's not a being who's working at a job and, and he goes back and you know, rings up the LCS and says, hey, I got this guy on the line and he wants to know, you know, it's not like that. You're talking to the LCS, that's the point. You're going direct to the source, right? Right to the top to the source. And that representative is just a piece of the LCS, just a, a connection. It's a, it's a contact, a connection point into the LCS. That's pretty good. Number six, there's snorkeling and scuba diving equipment. I presume because it's a fun activity and is easier to accept, but I imagine that once my beliefs aren't too tied down to the physical, I could just change it so I could breathe underwater instead, right? Or just not breathe when underwater. Or just not need to breathe when underwater. Absolutely. <laughs> you can add that to it. Absolutely. Uh, I start with the more physical stuff because that helps people get their... See, when you use your imagination with the idea you're going to then slowly let it go to the LCS to give you the, the data stream, it's helpful if you start with things that you're familiar with. If you're really familiar with like the sand, like we, we said earlier, you know, if you're really familiar with something, then it's easy to get your imagination wrapped around that. So I start with things that are familiar to people, which is the, the snorkeling, the snorkel or the scuba gear. Okay? Because if you just say, oh, jump in the water and you can breathe underwater, some people who don't have problems with their intellect won't have any trouble with that. They're just, fine. Okay. Tom Spark, you can breathe underwater and they'll go do it because they don't have this issue with their intellect judging everything. But I'm trying to make it easy for the people that have that intellect. So I like to give them things that are familiar to them so they can start with the familiar. And then after they scuba dive the whole bunch and they're familiar with Tom's Park and they're getting in there, they're getting connected to the LCS without any trouble. If they want to dispense with the scuba gear and just breathe underwater, fine. Just do that. Or have a metaphor. Make a metaphor. Put a bubble over your head that's, you know, gives you air. Whatever. It's up to you. But to begin with, it's easy -er, easier for people who are left-brained, logical process types, yeah. to start with things they know, processes they're familiar with. So that's an important part of Tom's part, that it does that. If it were just entirely magical, 
then it would be perfect for all the right brain people who don't really need it. They could just go there and, you know, they'd just be flying around and doing whatever they want with magic. But the left brain people would not be able to do anything there. They wouldn't be able to deal with it. They couldn't connect to it. It's too big a step. So Tom's Park is, is meant for the beginner. It's also something the advanced person can use. The advanced person wouldn't even, wouldn't even go to get scuba equipment. They just jump in the water and, and breathe underwater. They, they never even think about it. But the beginner needs to start with what he knows. Otherwise, he gets into a space of incredibility. His intellect won't let him go there. So Tom Spark is a, a lot of thought goes into the design of Tom Spark of exactly why all the things are the way they are. They all have a purpose for being, you know, the way they are. It's not just randomness and it's not inconsistency. It's that different people need different things. I know there was a lot of process built into that mm -hmm. for that particular reason and for reaching out to those with uh, uh, struggling with the intellect and letting go getting into the imagination. Um, number seven is, I noticed there were no change kiosks near the hot springs. Hot springs is one of my favorite places. I don't worry about what to change into. I just walk in with whatever. But I'm guessing you'll just choose one of the kiosks elsewhere and then make your way to the hot springs, right? Or is it a take off your clothes and get naked on the spot kind of thing instead? I guess it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, but there is a change kiosk very close to the hot spring. That hot spring is only a very short distance to the entrance to the underground of the lodge. I mean, it's not very far at all. I don't know what it would be in feet or meters or something, but they're very close to each other. And in that underground at the lodge, there is a change that you can use. And then you can walk out through the door and you're right there at the hot spring. So I didn't put one there because it would be redundant with the one that's available in the, in the downstairs lodge underground. So that's why it's, uh, you know, there's one down there because there's swimming pools and there's exercise equipment and there's all kinds of things down there where you need to change. And it's maybe about a two minute walk between that and the, spring so that two or three minute walk is just not that much i thought and I, I didn't put one there for that reason but if you just want to you know just go in with whatever or take off all your clothes and go in naked that's fine too whatever you're comfortable with you see you have to be comfortable there that's the point so you do things in whichever way you are comfortable so right. I never, I never bother with bathing suits. When I go there, I just pop in however I am. <laughs> you see, that's, that would seem because that's all right then, because in my park, that's expected. Now, if in your park, that's not expected and all the people there would go, oh, look at him. <laughs> he forgot his bathing suit. Well, if that's the way it is in your park, then you need to go to the change room first. My park doesn't act that way so anyhow well there's your answer okay yeah, so there's your answer. Yeah. question eight is there a reason to not feed the wildlife yes there is a reason not to feed the wildlife and the reason is being respectful of them i mean everybody knows that you know everybody has a diet right everybody has the things they eat and the things that keep them healthy and generally, the things that people eat don't keep animals healthy. Because people eat some pretty awful things. <laughs> people probably eat some of the trashiest food in the world. And critters don't. They tend to eat the things that are, you know, that their uh, instincts and, and uh, body tell them to eat. They, they're, they're more reasonable at what they eat. And people aren't. So it's just the general sense of respecting other things. So you could say, well, these are just imaginary critters. Well, no, you're interacting with them as real things. These are real critters. 
you're there and you're in a reality. The reality has critters. And we all know the big sign at the park everywhere says, don't feed the critters, don't feed the animals because it's not healthy. So you don't feed them just out of respect for them. That's why it's a, oh. it's a, it's a respect issue. Very good, thank you. Um, question nine. Yeah, well, maybe, let me, let me go back to that. If, okay. If you in your mind have this idea of Tom's Park is fake stuff, they aren't real animals, they're just fake animals. So why do you have to feed them? They don't even have to eat, you know? These are just fake animals. You're missing the whole point. That's your intellect trying to slice and dice and judge it according to the rule set in our physical reality. You got to let that go. You can't think of it as well. These are just made up animals, so they shouldn't have to eat at all. You have to go there with the idea of you're in a different reality. And in this reality, there are animals. These animals eat and they communicate, they talk, they're friendly, they won't bite you. You see, so that's the kind of animals there are. And you interact with them with respect and care. You notice I also said, don't, don't touch any of the baby animals unless you get permission from their parents first. That's just respect. So if you go into that park, like a thug walking through his home turf territory and you see, oh, look, that's an animal, but it's only a fake animal. So let me grab him and cut him in half or I'm going to put him on a spit, you know, and have him for dinner. And if you're going to go in with that kind of negativity and that kind of attitude, then basically you've, you've, you're missing the whole point. You're ruining it. You're turning Tom Spark into something else. So you have to go there with the idea that these, everything there is real. It's all real. There's nothing more real than information. In this park with the rule set that, that Tom's Park works to, everything is real. And you're going into that reality frame with all these real things. They're real because they're information. Whether you make that information in your head or whether it comes from the LCS is irrelevant. It's information information is real. Don't have the idea that because you've made it up, it's not real. You create information with your, with your imagination, then that's a real thing. You know, let's say you, re, you create somebody uh, because you're feeling angry and want to slap somebody. So in your imagination, you just create someone and start slapping them. That's real. And by making the choice to slap that person that you created in your mind, you are de-evolving. It's not like, oh, well, I just made that up, so I'm not really devolving because I didn't really hurt anybody. No. If you make up that person and then are mean to them, you're de-evolving because of the choices that you're making, you see? So why would you say that that person you made up isn't real? It'll cause you to de-evolve or cause you to evolve depending on how you interact with it, because those are choices that you make according to situations. So you, you have to, if you go there, because this is a, you know, this is a real space. It doesn't have fake critters that don't need to eat. It's got critters that do need to eat, and they need to eat healthy food. They also can talk, you see, and that's what lives in Tom's Park. These are living things. And they have free will, they're intelligent, and they're, they should be, in your mind, equal to yourself. They're things, conscious things, and you treat them with respect. So well, if you don't a, treat them with respect, then you're, then, you know, that's, that's negativity that you bring there. You'll be escorted out, I imagine, by some of the staff. You've set up a rule set. And that is how it works within this within this virtual reality. Right. So those are those are the rules, and and, and it, negativity wouldn't be um, wouldn't be tolerated. Mm. And when you speak to you create something uh, or you, you imagine you know someone and then it, you're slapping them. That's intent. So sure. the reason that you would de-evolve 
would be your choice is a yeah. negative intent. Exactly. And that's all that matters is what mm. you've chosen is negative. Exactly. And, uh, and therefore diminishes your quality. Yeah. Now you can, you can say, let's say you're playing a video game and your video game is some ugly game where you run over people and, and uh, you know, are violent and so on. And you can say, I'm playing a video game and that video game is just a pretend game. And those characters are just made up there for people to run over them. You know, that's why those people are walking in the street because, you know, they're going to get run over. It's part of the way this game is. Okay, well, you can play that game and not de-evolve by playing the game as long as you don't get into the, to the point that you really relish, you know, running over people. If it's just part of the game, fine. If you get in there with the idea, oh, well, I really want to run over that guy because, you know, I just don't like him or something, then maybe it is hurting you. But if you just play the game because that's the game, well, that is okay. But Thomas Park isn't like that. Thomas Park isn't some something you're just doing to play the game. Thomas Park is a place to go to, to be, because if it's not that, then it won't work. It's not going to connect you to the LCS. It's not going to help you get rid of your fear. It's not going to help you go out of body. It's not going to do any of those things. If you go into it with an idea, well, this is just a fake space I'm making up and none of it's real. If you start with that attitude, then you might as well just not go because you've already put the park then into a space where it can't be helpful to you. You see, so this, again, you're using your intellect to make, to judge and assess something that is entirely a different reality frame with a different rule set. You can't judge it by PMR standards and by PMR rule sets. It just doesn't make sense. It's a separate place. And yes, those are real animals. And yes, they do deserve your respect and your care. And so does everybody else. See, so does the staff. You can't say, oh, well, these are just made up staff, so I can do anything I want to them. You know, I can, I can boss them around. I can slap them if I want. You know, I can be rude because I'm, you know, I'm big and they're small and it doesn't matter anyway. Well, if you have that attitude, then you shouldn't be going to Tom's Park in the first place. That's you bringing your own negativity in there and acting badly. When you go there, everything is as real as it is here. It's just a different reality frame. It's all about developing your quality um, yes. by through your developing your intuition through imagination. And through that, you're getting more proficient at not only exploring consciousness there, but yeah. living a better life here. Right. Yeah, you see, it's the same mistake that some people make when they find out that this reality is a virtual reality. Some people, when they say, oh, well, if this is a virtual reality, then I can do anything I want. It doesn't matter. You know, I can kill people. I can rob banks. I can, I can do anything I want because it's just a virtual reality. It doesn't make any difference. Well, that's not true. Yes, it is a virtual reality, but everything you do does make a difference. It makes a difference of whether you evolve or de-evolve. And that's the only thing that makes the reality valuable in the first place is because it can help you evolve or de-evolve. It can help you grow or it can help you shrink the quality of your consciousness. So it's the same sort of thing. This, this reality is very important. Sure, it's a virtual reality, but the fact that you're nice to people is important. The most important thing that you can do here, it's that important. So the... You know, it's exactly the same idea. People apply it to this reality. Oh, it's only a virtual reality, so therefore it doesn't matter. It's just like I'm playing a, a, a game and, you know, I can run over people in the street in my game, so I can do anything to anybody and it's okay. No, you can't. You see, and it's the same with Tom's Park. It is another virtual reality. And the choices you make there, if you're rude to the staff or something else, then you're going to de-evolve for that. And if you bring that kind of negativity and dysfunction with you, you'll find it there. You bring that and you expect the staff to be rude back because, you know, 
you'll probably create that. That's why I say in the, in the instructions, anytime you find anything that is not positive, it's because you have brought it there. It's, it doesn't exist there without you. So anything you run into that's negative in Tom's part, it's you are the one that's brought it there. Thank you, Tom. This has been very interesting. Question number nine. On weekends between 9 p.m. and midnight, there's a live band assembled from some of the more musical staff. Is that 9 p.m. my time? I realize I'm thinking of it in physical terms, but it's still a bit confusing trying to wrap my head around. No, that's 9 p.m. in Tom's Park. <laughs> it's 9 p.m. in Tom's Park, not 9 p.m. here. It's a different reality. So if, if what you really want to do is go to those dances and, and socialize, then just go there and it'll be nine o'clock and they'll just, the band will be warming up if that's what it is you want to do, you see? So, or you can go there earlier and go to the, you know, go to the spa, go to the lily pond and do other things and then look at your watch and say, oh, it's almost nine o'clock. I'm going to go over to the rec center and see you know, see who's playing tonight and, uh, you know, get to know some people, talk, interact. Well, fine, you can do that. But if that's the only reason you're going there, then it's going to be that time when you get there. So, yes, it's not 930 here, but it's there. In parkland, in the park reality, it's a weekend. And it's between nine and midnight on weekends. So when you go there, no matter when you go there from this reality, you see, it's, if you're going to, if you're going to go dance, then it's going to be on a weekend at nine o'clock, which can occur anytime you want it to. That's it. Thank you, Tom. Um, question 10 about the cosmic brain drain library. What concepts could you download? Like, Knowledge of quantum mechanics is intellectual, not really something you're going to absorb to your being level. So if you could provide any examples of what to gain knowledge up there, I, I'd appreciate it. Um, no, I won't give you any examples because that is the way this works, is that you have to come up with your own ideas and examples. It's not, see, and yes, you can get understanding even about things like quantum physics. You can get a sense for what it means and how it works. No, you're not going to be able to do the math when you're done, but you will have a sense of its meaning and significance. You'll get a sense of, of its, well, I guess that's it. Meaning and significance is the best thing. You know, how it fits in, how it uh, um, sees the world. You'll get a sense of it. No, you won't be able to necessarily explain that to other people. Oh, I'm a quantum physicist now because I went to Tom's Park and got the quantum physics download. No, it's not going to make you a quantum physicist, but you will gain some understanding of its significance, particularly significance to you and your life and your sense of reality. So yeah, go try it, see what you get. But you have to come up with the subject. See, it has to be a subject of yours. It has to be something that you think about. It's something that, that you bring there and open your mind to. So I lead you in that situation to go there, to think about it, and then to open your mind to it. And what will happen is you'll get a download. But because you're not a physicist, if you got a download of equations, you wouldn't know what to do with it. It wouldn't be useful. That would just be trash, unhelpful. So I give you something more useful than that. I give you a download in feeling of its significance to you, what it means. You know, maybe you'd say the you know, philosophy of it, the metaphysics of it. What, what is its significance to you? And that's what you'll get. And you'll get that at a deep level, and you'll retain it. Weeks later, months later, you'll still have that. It's an actual thing. It's not like a, a dream that disappears. You'll, you'll get that information. So if you want something that is way out of your track, like quantum physics, and you're not a quantum physicist, then you should expect that what you're going to get is about quantum physics and how it applies to you. Not so much you're going to learn to do the math of quantum physics. 
that would be an intellectual process. So it depends on what you choose, you know, what you choose. If you choose something that you do know a lot about, you may learn some new things about something that you have detailed knowledge of. But if it's something you know nothing about, then it's going to be a vaguer sense of a bigger picture importance and significance. All right, thank you. Um, on a question 11, um, <laughs> about the lodge underground, like getting pedicures and working for the avatar, is that my PMR avatar or Tom's Park avatar? I can imagine going to the gym in Tom's Park can help your PMR avatar as well, but pedicures, I have a hard time believing that. So I might be just a bit confused here. <laughs> the pedicures and manicures and things like that, you know, back rubs and, and uh, other kinds of services like that are services that will help you, one, get into Tom's Park because those are very tactile things. Remember, you start with your imagination and you want to do all your senses. And if you've ever had, or if you've had dozens of massages, then you know exactly what that feels like. And what it feels like afterwards, you know, you feel really good. You feel much more relaxed and settled and your body feels better. And, you know, it's a nice thing. So in order to get that sense, that feeling, that, that, oh, that feels so good. Oh, yeah, I'm more relaxed now, you know, to get that, then you go get a massage there. And when people get pedicures, they like that. It makes them feel good. They not only like the attention, they like the result, but afterwards they feel, usually it's a female that gets the pedicure. Usually they feel better. They, you know, it's a, it's a positive thing for them. And it may not do anything for you. You know, if you're, if you're some burly guy that thinks a pedicure is the most ridiculous thing you could ever think of, it's not going to do much for you. I'd suggest don't go there and get a pedicure unless you just want to try it out. But if you're female and that's something that really makes you feel kind of special, you like the attention, you, you like the fact that now you can wear sandals and your toes will be more attractive and whatever, then you can go there and have that experience. Again, I set that up because mainly for the females, because there's literally millions of females who can relate to that process. They may not relate to jet skiing at all. You know, oh, getting in a jet ski and driving real fast, going around corners and spraying water, they may say, who would want to do that? You know, that's the dumbest thing I could think of. But having a, a pedicure, oh, yes, that'd be nice. You see, so it's not a... It's not made just for one person or two people or just this kind of person or that kind of person. So there's things there for everybody. If you don't want a pedicure, <laughs> don't get one. If you think, well, let me try. Maybe I would look good with pretty toenails too. And you can get maybe some glossy, you know, day glow toenails and they'll glow in the dark. You know, that could be cool. But anyway, it's just a thing that a person can experience that if they've had a lot of experience of that in the physical, it's easy for them to get into that. And because a pedicure ends up relaxing you and you feel good afterwards, that's a good mindset to be in when you're doing intuitive things rather than being tense or, you know, aggravated or whatever all, you know, whether the opposites are to that. So it's just another place where some people will connect in a strong way to help them have a good experience in the park. So for a lady, I can see she may not want to go to the beach or to the boats. First place she might want to go is, you know, a back rub and a, and a pedicure, you know. That may be the place for her to start. And after that, she may be in connection almost immediately with the LCS because that's so easy for her to get into because it's so familiar and it's so positive in her mindset. So that's just a good way to go. So now let's say you have been driving jet skis all your life since you were 12 years old and you just love jet skis. And it's just the most fun experience you've ever had in your life was just zipping around on jet skis. Well, now for you, the jet ski is the place to go because you start with your imagination and you'll get into that just like that because it's familiar to you. It's positive for you. That'd be a great place to start. You never been in a jet ski? Well, you could try one out, but it may not have that same 
you know, it may not have that same thing. So I have lots of things there. So it's not just for certain kinds of people, certain sexes, you know, people who have jet skied. It's for everybody. And the, the, the pedicure is uh, more there for the females because that's something that ladies do. And well, it's a memory appreciate. kind of thing, isn't it? It's tactile. Yeah. And if you have done the pedicure thing or the jet ski thing, you have memories of that. You yeah. have the feel of that. You have the, 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 the scent of right. the, the area that you're in. Um, right. All of exactly. the senses are engaged and that's what lets you let go. Exactly. So it's a good place to let go in. And if you've already let go and you're just not sure what to do next, you're in between things. And uh, maybe you just want to think about the quality of your life and, you know, what's going on with you and your growth. And that may be the perfect place to do that. You know, go in a salon and get a pedicure while you, uh, you know, think about the nature of reality or something, you know, solve a problem. It's, it's just another space that people can, some people, can get into very easily that, like you say, it's a multi-sensual experience that is easy because it's a part of your actual experience. So it makes it real easy to get there, let go, connect to the LCS. And after that, you can get up and you know, go to the brain drain library or go to the travel agency or go you know, to the, to the um, hexagon room or do something else. But maybe that's where you start. Maybe you start with the pedicure, you see, or with a massage. Or with a haircut, who knows, you know, or shoe shine, you know, you can, uh, you can, uh, anything that is familiar to you is a good place to start. Thank you, Tom. That's going to be helpful to people. Um, question 12 is trips within trips, twips within twips. Okay. <laughs> That's what I, Bugs Bunny would say. Twips within twips. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> okay. Question 12. <laughs> Trips within trips. The <laughs> All right. Okay. Trips within trips. The way back. I notice that I can travel to other virtual realities, but can also transport me to a private room if I want to talk to someone. And unless it's a big room, I can't imagine taking the way back with me. It sounds more like it teleports me there leaving the ship behind and me alone is transported. And when the chair doesn't come with it, anyway, I'm wondering if the ship comes with me, <laughs> help me. <laughs> me out of this one. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway, I'm wondering if the ship comes with me or, or my trips or if it transports me alone, <laughs> but I think this is something I probably shouldn't get an answer to. <laughs> Peter, yes. you're a riot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You're overthinking it a bit. If, if you feel better with the ship coming with you, then bring it along with you. If uh, you don't need it, then let it go. So maybe if you're going back uh, in time and to where there were dinosaurs and you want to make sure you can run and jump back into your ship real quick, you should leave it or maybe have it walk along beside you, go with you. But um if you're just going to a room to talk to somebody, you probably ought to just let it disappear so it can teleport you. Whatever works best for you at there the time. Is. Yeah, <laughs> All so right. You're really overthinking the process. Okay. You're, in this reality, you do not have to worry with the details. The details will take care of themselves however it best suits you. That's one of the nice things about this reality. See, in our reality, with this very tight rule set, you have to deal with all the details all the time. Everything you do has effects and affects other things. And you have to deal with all of that. In Thomas Park, it's not like that. It's a very pleasant place. And the details just take care of themselves. So if you need the ship, then it'll be there. If you don't need it, it won't be there. It just takes care of itself. And if you didn't need it and it disappeared, and then suddenly you change your mind, there it is. It'll appear again. It'll come just when you need it. Very customizable. It is. All right, question 13. About the youth booth kiosks, why these three specific ages? Why not more? Why not allow us to choose any age? I guess I could change the rules on that once I'm experienced. I suspect you could change the rules on that, or you could build your own kiosk wherever you want. If you'd like one to do that, you just go ahead and create one. I created for those specific ages 
because I did not want to create problems. And I saw that other ages could create problems for people. So I left them out. But if you want to put it in there, you're welcome to do it. So I just gave those ages that would enhance somebody to do the things that in Tom's Park that might be difficult. Let's say you're, you're an 80 year old and you go to Tom's Park and in your mind, you're still an 80 year old visiting Tom's Park. And you'd really rather be a 20 year old or something, an 18 year old or 25 year old, because that way you could go play handball. 80 year olds don't play handball. They bruise too easily. They're not quick enough. Their balance isn't good enough. So that's something you just couldn't do, or you couldn't go hiking. So you see this way, I, I allow people of any age, and some people, you know, if you're a right brain person, you probably wouldn't have a trouble just getting younger and going doing those things. Oh, okay, I'll just go hiking. I don't care if it's rugged because this is Tom's Park. You know, I don't have to worry about being 80 years old and you just go do it. But other people wouldn't feel like that. There'll be other people who will go there and they will have to deal with their age, whatever that is. It will not occur to them that they can do that. So I wanted everybody there to be able to enjoy all the things that are in the park. And for some people, they need to be younger to do that. Now, if you were seven years old and you went through that, well, you could then experience being, you know, 35 and see what that felt like. But it's just those three because I wanted to keep it simple and not create any issues for people. I wanted it to just be something that allowed older people to get younger again so they could enjoy everything in the park because they may not think that they could do that. And now this sets it up so they can do that. Because otherwise, if you're older, you could go to Tom's Park and the only thing you could do is sit on a bench. That would be the limits of your, of your experience there. And, you, and a lot of people would just do that because they know that's all that they could do. Well, I put a thing there that allows them to escape that belief. You see? And... So that's, that's the main reason. And I justify that in the text because I say that was, it was just put in to help people go hiking, to help people do the rough things that otherwise they couldn't do because some of the hiking is pretty rigorous. You know, you have to be pretty young to, to do that and you have to be strong. And um, that leaves probably the large part of the population out, you know, that uh, are not that way. And I wanted them to feel that they didn't have to be limited by that belief. That's an awesome so, picture. So that's why it's there. Very nice. All right, Tom. Well, the last question is about the hexagons exploring the larger consciousness room, the hexagon room, the exploring the larger consciousness system room. Um, it sounds more like doing it in the mind's eye than actually switching data stream from Thomas Park to having your entire awareness in another virtual reality, like the yellow benches. Is that accurate? No, it's not. It's, you know, once you're into Tom's Park and you're there and your intellect is sitting down, you're totally in the intuitive space. When you're totally in that intuitive space, you can still think, you can still create information, like you could create an object there. It's not that that eliminates you from thinking you still have your ability to direct, you know, to create. What you leave behind is your judging and analyzing and comparing. See, well, that's all the things that you've been tripped up here so far. Most of the things on the questions, you know, like, why is this like that? That's your intellect. It's, it's judging. It's comparing. It wants to know the logic of that. You see, so that is what gives you trouble. That's what will bump you out of the intuitive space. Intuitive space doesn't work like that. It's not logical. It's beyond logic. So if you try to be logical there, it just bumps you out. It's, it's a misfit. So anyway, you get into Tom's Park, you go get your toenails painted, you relax, you get into the hot springs, you talk to some of your friends, you know, there, you, you you interact with the staff that you're friends with, uh, maybe the chipmunks that you're friends with, and you're just there. You go up to the hexagon room, and you are now 
out of body, even though your your own decisions can come in and and say, well, now I'll go up to the hexagon room. Well, that's you. It's not that the system told you now you should go up to the hexagon room. That's you. Like I say, you can be totally in, you know, just getting data stream from the LCS, just getting data stream from yourself, or any kind of mixture of that. And basically, you'll be giving yourself directions. Well, now I'd like to do this. Now I'd like to get my toes painted. Now I'd like to you know, go to the hot springs. And that's not the LCS telling you to do those things. That's you exercising your free will choice there in Tom's Park. And that's fine. You can do that. But as you then talk to your squirrel or your chipmunk, then that is the LCS that carries on that conversation. And as you go to the brain drain library, that is the LCS that's giving you that download. And as you go to go out of body or to you know get data or whatever, that is the LCS, it's a connection. So what you're doing, you're in a space where your connection to the LCS is, is kind of set up to be, you know, whenever you want it, however you like it. So if you want them to do an out of body, you go up to that space, you're already completely in the intuitive space. It's easy. Except if your intellect jumps in and says, oh, now I'm in the thing to go out of body. I wonder if this is really going to work. Let's see. Well, nothing happened. Of course, nothing happened because you just got out of the intuitive space, got back into your intellectual space, and nothing happens there. Out of body only happens in the intuitive space. So, see, that's the point. You have to leave your intellect and just experience. Leave that intellect sitting on the sidelines, experiencing. And people who are left brain, as you seem to be, have a problem with that. And when they walk into that room to go out of body, their intellect jumps right in and says, well, how, how is this room going to work? And how is this going to make me go out of body? And I wonder if this really works. Isn't it just me and my imagination now? Well, it will be just you and your imagination now because your intellect just jumped in and took over. And now it's nothing but your, 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 uh, your imagination. You just went from 100% being in the intuitive to 100% being you know, in the intellect and nothing will happen. So you have to let all that go and just experience. You can't go through the park analyzing it and judging it. Just have the experience. Have it again. Have it again. And after you've had it 100 times, now get your intellect and go back over it and say, is this experience useful? Are these hours well spent? Am I learning things? What's it doing for me? How am I different now that I've been doing that? Do I feel the relaxation? Do am I less, you know, uh, anxious? Is you know, what's the value here? Yes, then you can judge it. Then you should judge it. You know, it's an important thing. After a while, you should make these judgments. Should I put more time in it, or is it a waste of my time? And now the intellect is right where it's supposed to be, making choices, doing assessments. But don't do that while you're trying to have the experience. And don't do that even after the first five or 10 experiences. You won't have enough data to make a good intellectual assessment. So after you've done it 50 times, 100 times, after you've been doing it for six months, now you'll have enough data to make an assessment of the value of it. You see? So that's that's kind of the point. Yes, you do eventually have to make an assessment of is this worth my time or am I wasting my time here? But I think that if you don't make that assessment until you really are familiar and you're really working the way it's supposed to work for you in Tom's Park, and you do that over several months, I'll give it a 99.9% .9 that that assessment will always be positive. You will have gained a great deal from the process. But you won't know that the first time you do it, or the second, or the third. You're, you, as a human being, don't change who you are on a dime. It's a slow process, and you have to give yourself time to do that. So if you work for an hour, you know, an hour a day with Tom's Park for a year, well, you ought to be able to judge whether or not you should do it anymore. You should have enough data by then. But if every one of those times, that whole year long, all 365 hours of it, 
was you with your intellect trying to judge it and, and analyze it, then you won't have gotten anything out of it at all. You see, it's important for you to let go of the intellect. Otherwise, you won't get much out of it. You'll just be struggling. And it, uh, its value will be kind of lost on you. So that's the point. But I'm, I'm very certain that if you actually do let your intellect go, explore and develop that intuitive side, you will come to the conclusion a year later that you've learned a lot. You've changed a lot. It's helped you relax. It's helped you see bigger pictures. It's helped you connect better in your relationships with everybody. So you'll see the improvements just by going there and having fun and doing things and getting your toenails painted and whatever else that you want to do. Well, this has been very fun, Tom. Thank you, Keith F. and Theodore, for your questions on Tom's Park. I hope Tom's insightful answers will help those who already have Tom's Park. And for those of you who are considering giving Tom's Park a try, I think you'll find it a very magical place and experience. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. INMBT events, hope you liked this video. We now have well over a thousand hours of free video on this user-friendly, ad-free YouTube channel. Though these videos are free to our viewers, they represent many thousands of hours in production and editing, and many thousands of dollars invested in video and audio equipment, along with the required computers and software to store and process the raw video into finished products. So far, all of this content has been funded directly out of our own pockets. Be assured, we will always continue to do what we can. It's our life, our purpose, a labor of love that we will continue to pursue as best we can. However, those pockets are not as deep as they used to be. Thus, we are now seeking to augment our resources with support from our viewers. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our newly created Patreon account or through a one-time donation. The links are in the description below. Thank you.